Thank you all for joining. We'll begin the webinar shortly. Hi, thank you all for joining. We'll be giving participants a few minutes to join. We'll be starting promptly at 3.35. <clears throat> computer <clears throat> yes. Okay, so right now you're unmuted and everybody can hear you. Thank you all for joining and welcome to Navigating LA County and Metro Contracting Opportunities. My name is Mildred and I'll be providing technical support during today's webinar. If you have technical difficulties, please email Vivian Soto at vsoto at imwis.com. 
The email is provided on the slide for your reference. Please send your questions via the Q&A function. A senior account manager is available to answer in real time. Disclaimer. As the host of this meeting, Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services reserves the right to remove anyone participating or engaging in behavior that is either inappropriate or a distraction to the proceedings. Persons involved in such behavior will be immediately removed from this meeting and not allowed to rejoin. On the panel, we have representatives from the Contractor Development and Bonding Program, Metro and LA County Public Works. Joining us as well is a contractor who has kindly agreed to share their testimony about the Contractor Development and Bonding Program. And now to introduce the LA County and Metro Board Member Janice Hahn, please welcome Ingrid Merriweather, President and CEO of Merriweather and Williams Insurance Services. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for participating in today's event. We're so happy that you uh, chose to put this on your calendar today and we certainly hope that you find the time you spent here worthwhile. Um, unfortunately, the supervisor could not be here herself, but uh, she was very generous with her time and has provided a video uh, to share with you all. And, um, before we um, show the video, I just wanted to acknowledge the supervisor and her team. Uh, we've had the pleasure of working with the supervisor, not only with um, LA County, but in her prior uh, capacity. And the one thing that we know for sure is that she has been a long staunch advocate for small and diverse businesses. She's always been supportive of any initiatives that create more equity. Um, and inclusion in contracting with public agencies. She's been very supportive of the program that we administer for both uh, the city, Metro, and now the county um, for quite a few years. And I can't tell you how important um, elected official advocacy and support is to making sure these kind of resources um, are available to the small and diverse contractor community. So with that said, although we don't have the supervisor herself today, we have uh, several senior members from her team. I think her chief of staff um, is here and also uh, someone who works in economic development in her department. So thank you all for joining us. And with that, I'll let you uh, play the video. Hi, I'm LA County Supervisor Janice Hahn, and I want to welcome you to today's workshop. I know that big transportation and development projects aren't just good news for residents. They're good news for local construction companies who can bid on these projects. But for too long, contracting opportunities have been out of reach for many small businesses like yours who don't have the resources to devote to getting through what can be a complicated process. For years, I've been a champion of breaking down these barriers and giving you the support you need to compete with bigger companies and to win contracts. One of the challenges smaller businesses like you have faced is bonding, which is required of all LA County procurement. If you don't have experience with bonding, it could take years to get bonded on your own. That is why we have launched this virtual workshop series. LA County has recruited experts who are going to walk you through the process of obtaining a completion bond, and they will link your small business with subcontracting opportunities so you can start doing work with LA County right away. I hope you will all find today's workshop informative and helpful. Thank you for your interest in partnering with LA County, and I hope to work with you and your business very soon. Hi, I'm El. <clears throat> all right, well, we thank the supervisor for providing um, that message, and she's correct. We are going to share with you some information about bonding. Uh, we won't go into the great depths of it today because that's what we're here for and want you to reach out to us if you're not already a participant in the program, and we will work with you in an individualized way. So with that, I think we're going to start with my portion anyway of introducing the Contractor Development and Bonding Assistance Program. Uh, and we're going to divide this up into two sections. So I'm going to take the first half and my colleague will take the second half a little later in the program. And in between, you're going to hear 
about some contracting opportunities. So if we can get started, you guys can advance the slide. Thank you. Um, and just as a reminder uh, that we're taking any questions in the Q&A um, and we have somebody available who will be responding to those live time. So just by way of a little bit of introduction about who our company is, we are a actually a commercial property and casualty insurance brokerage firm. So bonding kind of falls under the umbrella of, of insurance brokerage services. So that's one of the ways that we're um, connected to it. But more um, important than that is that as ourselves being a minority and small firm, we recognized the barriers that um, small and diverse businesses encounter trying to do business with public agencies. Um, things like risk management practices that have high standards for insurance, bonding requirements, other kind of areas of technical requirements, we knew served as a barrier for the inclusion um, and equitable participation of small and diverse contractors. So being in the risk management industry, we decided that we were going to approach um, our work differently and developed programs uh, starting 25 years ago to partner with public agencies to reduce the barriers uh, to enable small and diverse contractors to participate on public works projects. We've done about a billion dollars in um, bond transactions through these programs over the last 25 years, um, and contractors have been awarded close to $400 million dollars in public works contracts. And the thing that I think we're really most proud about is really the, the very low loss uh, default rate we have. So in, in our program, we've had about a thousand contractors complete about $350 million in work over the last 25 years. And only two of those contractors uh, failed to complete their projects. Um, and we measure that in our industry in terms of loss ratio. Our loss ratio for this program is less than 1%. The industry loss ratio for construction default is about 20%. So, you know, there's been a lot of misperception that small and diverse contractors lack capacity to engage and successfully participate in public works projects. And we're here to uh, tell a different story. That's certainly not been our experience and that is mostly attributable to the fact that small and diverse contractors have the aptitude and the attitude and the capacity to successfully complete public construction projects. You can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so we talk about the program in the context of our four pillars. They really are a way to capture um, the uh, breadth and scope of services that the programs are here to offer. And let me say from the beginning that these are all services that are no cost to you. Um, these programs are supported by our program sponsors. That includes LA County, Metro, and the city of LA. They are all wanting to have more engagement of small and diverse contractors on their projects. So they understand there are barriers and they wanted to invest in resources to help dismantle some of those barriers. The other thing they've come to realize is by eliminating these kinds of barriers, they position more contractors to compete for their projects. Um, and because in most cases, they award projects on a low bid basis, anytime a contractor overcomes those barriers and is able to uh, submit a bid and they're the successful low bidder, the agency saves money. So we've been able to track that in our program. And it's been about $22 million that we've captured in contract cost savings to our public entity sponsors. So just recognize that, you know, these kind of resources addressing these barriers, it's about your inclusion and participation, but there is a return on the investment to the public agencies because they benefit when there's a larger pool of contractors positioned to compete. So let me tell you about the four pillars and give you a little bit of a breakdown of what uh, these components are. So, it starts with uh, individualized assessments and technical assistance. So that's the first pillar um, furthest in the screen. So that is to let you know, we don't take a cookie cutter approach. We don't assume all contractors are in the exact same place and have the exact same challenges. We know that you represent a spectrum. We have uh, contractors who are just recently licensed, just starting out in the public works arena. 
We have other contractors who have been in the business for a decade or more. And we know that the life cycle of a small contractor varies and is individualized for each firm. So when you enroll in the program, you're assigned to an account manager. An account manager handles a portfolio of contractors, somewhere around 25 small contractors. So you get very individualized attention. You get one individual that you will be interacting with mostly who will come to learn all about your business, um, what, what your goals are, what your needs are in working with you through an assessment process. And then we wrap around um, the full range of technical assistance, bonding support, contract financing, um, and you'll hear more about some of those other services shortly. So the next pillar you see is bonding and contract financing assistance. So bonding, um, obviously, as you heard from the supervisor, bonds are, are generally required on public works projects. If you're going to bid to a public agency directly, you have to be able to provide a bond. And some of, the, some of you who are uh, more often working as subcontractors, there are instances when prime contractors are looking for you to bond. Um, almost in all instances, you are uh, expected to prove your ability to bond. So even pre-qualifying with the prime contractor, they may not require you to post a bond, but they may want to know that you have bonding capacity. Um, and so this has been a very long entrenched barrier. It's kind of a chicken and egg situation for contractors to qualify for bonding. It's really a financial guarantee instrument. So it's really more like credit. Um, and so there lie some of the challenges for smaller firms, um, either just emerging or trying to grow and get their businesses to the next level. Um, contract financing assistance, that's certainly the other arena of systemic obstacles for small contractors, access to capital. Um, we understand that when you're a small contractor and you've been awarded a project, you're both celebrating and commiserating on how you're going to find the cash flow support to fund the prosecution of the contract while you're awaiting progress payments. We understand that that time delay can be significant um, and an enormous burden for a small contractor, really impacting your ability to take on work, e either in terms of the size of project you can um, financially support, or maybe the ability to support one project, um, more than one project at a time. That all leads to capacity building. So that's really the ultimate goal here is to help you build capacity and we know access to um, financing is critical. So uh, essentially, if you are awarded a contract with any one of our three sponsors, that's again, City of LA, Metro and LA County, we can provide funding for your contract related expenses on an as needed basis. Um, that means funds can be available to you from the sign and execution of a contract and notice to proceed and help you with that first payroll or that first material purchase um, all the way through um, completion of the contract if that cash flow support um, that is needed is ongoing. Um, and this is not based on your credit. It's not based on your financials. If you've been awarded a contract, we use the contract itself to collateralize this funding. Um, and this really comes to us by way of our partnerships with community development financial institutions. One of those happens to be PACE, an organization you may have heard of um, in Southern California. Uh, the next pillar you'll see is education, training, and contract support. Um, so my colleague's gonna get more into the contract support side, but education and training, is a substantial part of the services and resources you will receive through this program. So that's um, group education and training. That is uh, what we call academies, which are multi-week trainings where we do a deep immersive dive um, into subjects like bidding and estimating, um, uh, uh, understanding your contract, uh, project management, and what's great about uh, many of these trainings is this is where we partner with the primes. So your larger primes are uh, support these programs. Uh, they generally do um, a good number of the individual trainings. And so you have an opportunity to interface with them 
especially for the academies on a more intimate basis over multiple weeks. Um, and we have seen over the years that just that, um, that kind of opportunity to network with those primes beyond you know, placing your business card in a bowl, um, you're engaging with them week after week, they get to know you um, at a deeper level. And that has led to, I think we've tracked about uh, something close to $30 million in contract awards that have just come about um, as a result of our small contractors interfacing with our prime contractors. Um, and then that really speaks to the prime contractor partnership. So obviously we work closely with the large primes that tend to do business with these agencies. They are looking for your participation. Uh, they know that you have um, some of these challenges, bonding and uh, funding your contract, um, the need for some additional technical support. So they work closely with the program to help source small contractors based on uh, projects they've been awarded and different trades that they need um, or when uh, they think that you could benefit from some of the support from the program. So we have a very close tie and relationship with the prime contractor community. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I won't go into a tremendous amount of detail with what uh, bonding is, but I'll just give everybody kind of a basic and fundamental understanding because I think that helps to understand why it's so challenging. So again, bonding is much like credit. Um, and it's a three-party agreement. It's an agreement between the contractor, otherwise known as the principal, the bonding company, and the obligee, the person to whom is requiring a bond. So that may be the public agency owner, or that may be a prime contractor. But those are essentially the three parties um, to a bond. And a bond is essentially a guarantee of two things. It's a guarantee that you will perform and complete the contract based on the specifications within the contract document. So you can almost imagine a bond wrapping around your contract because everything contained within that contract that you're responsible for, the bonding company is there to back that up. If you were not in a position to complete the contract, the bonding company would be required to step in, provide a replacement contractor who would be held to the same terms and conditions within that contract. The other uh, area that a bond applies to is what's called the payment bond. So you as a contractor are uh, performing a, a project, prosecuting the work, you might be hiring a subcontractor. You might have um, union obligations. You're going to be purchasing materials. Those are all contract-related expenses and obligations. If any of those parties who you've engaged are not paid, they can file a claim against your bond. It's called a payment bond claim. Um, and so that's the other purpose of the bond, because if those parties are not paid, the bonding company has an obligation to step in, validate that there is an obligation due, and once that's determined um, and validated, then they actually have to pay on your behalf any party who hasn't been paid. So that applies to you even. If you're a subcontractor on a project with a prime and you've performed work and you haven't been paid for that work, you too can actually file a claim against the prime contractor's bond um, to essentially force payment for the services that you provided. So when you understand what a bond covers, performance, completion of the contract, payment of all the contract obligations, it's kind of easy to understand that this is something you have to qualify for. It's not like insurance that you just submit an application and pay the premium. Uh, this is underwritten more like a loan than anything else. And so when you're small and they're um, assessing financials and capacity, it's just one of those classic chicken and egg situations. So the program is here to um, kind of disrupt that process and bring some added resources to bear uh, to help you qualify for bonds so that you can participate on these projects. Next slide, please. You can advance it. There we go. 
So um, the program will help you obtain your first bond or help you increase your bonding capacity. Um, the program in and of itself is about capacity building, um, providing that to you through technical services, bonding, contract financing. I mentioned it before, you get a dedicated account manager. One of the account manager's role is to serve as your business development representative. Um, because we're engaged with the primes, because we're under contract um, with the public entities and have an awareness of project opportunities that would align with your particular area of trade, the account managers get to know you, get to know your sweet spot, get to know what size projects um, you might be interested in and are essentially out there helping to identify um, project opportunities for you. So they serve in a, in a number of ways, but one of them is to help you with business development. Um, we talked about um, the bonding uh, program that includes collateral support for you to qualify for a, a bid bond, performance and payment bond. The program also will help you with financial statements. So um, having good quality financials is sometimes the cornerstone of accessing bonding or accessing financing. Um, and the program sponsors have uh, supported uh, our ability to subsidize on a one-time basis the cost of not just financial statements, but also accounting related services. And we have a number of accountants and CPAs that are partners to the program that are familiar with small contractors that we can refer you to if you don't have um, an existing relationship that's serving you. And then if you haven't already noticed uh, or haven't already been receiving them, you soon will be, but we send out uh, something called the Contractor Weekly to keep you informed about um, project and bid opportunities or events that are uh, relevant to, to small uh, firms participation. So that's a way that we try to kind of help you um, condense in one communication kind of what's going on out there by way of, of opportunities. Next slide, please. So um, to participate in the program, it doesn't require much. You have to be a small um, business. You have to be located within um, LA County. Um, this is about the contract financing program, but in terms of your participation in any of the program services you've heard, that really is the only requirement that uh, you have to be a small local contractor within the county. Um, for some components like bonding, like bond guarantees, you also have to be certified um, with that particular agency. So essentially, this is a little more detail about the contract financing assistance program. Essentially, we're, we're using accounts receivable just of the single contract that you're needing assistance in. We use that as collateral to enable access to the funding that's available through our CDFI partner. Uh, funds are released on an as-needed basis. They're not all released up front, but if we make a determination with you, you've got a, say, a million-dollar contract, and we're going to provide you with $250,000 of cash flow support, um, we work with you to um, have those funds distributed um, in alignment with your cost associated with prosecuting the work. Um, so that first month, as I said, it might be uh, you've got weekly payroll, so it might be three or four payroll periods. It might be the purchase of material equipment, um, and then those funds are uh, distributed directly to those parties. So the funds can only be used for the particular contract um, that you're being provided funding support for. Um, there is a cost with funding. It's not free money. Um, but it's actually very reasonable uh, competitive market rate. It's an interest rate of six and a quarter percent right now, um, plus a 1% origination fee. And that interest rate is applied to the amount that's outstanding of the loan for the period that it's outstanding. So it's, it's, it actually ends up being rather negligible um, because our average loans are outstanding something like 16 weeks. Um, so when you factor that in, the finance charges are actually very, very reasonable, certainly more than um, you would get if you were financing work on a credit card, which we know we know sometimes that's what you have to do to get through, but we're hoping to provide you with a, an alternative that uh, is, is definitely less costly 
uh, than some of those other resources. So um, to participate in contract financing, you just have to be enrolled in the program. We take you through the process. Um, we have some particular education and training with respect to qualifying for the contract-based financing. But one of the benefits in addition to money um, that you receive through this process is some new tools, um, like the ability to generate a uh, project-specific cash flow, for example. Um, that becomes something that we need from you and we can help you be able to generate these. Um, and that's advantageous for you as you go forward and approach other projects. You'll have the ability um, to anticipate what cash flow needs you would have for any given project. So there are a number of kind of financial uh, strategies and tools that you will receive as part of your participation in this program. So we're kind of helping expand your capacity, providing you some more technical tools while we are also providing you with the resources that you need like financing or bonding support so that you can take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. Next slide. Um, oh, I think I, is this my stopping point, Robert, or do I go through this? Sure. Okay, this is mine. Thank you, sorry, Robert and I have a handoff. I'm always unclear where, where I hand off. Um, thank goodness I'm not running a relay race. Uh, so I already talked about the assessments and the work plan. So again, you work with your project manager, your uh, account manager, they'll do that assessment, they'll develop a work plan with you. And that work plan pretty much becomes the guiding source of what services, uh, what support you will need. Of course, it evolves as your needs change. Um, we can create a contractor profile for you. We've, that's something that we do for program participants. It's a pretty nice piece of collateral that you'll have that talks about your business, includes some photos of projects that you've been involved in, has information like your certifications, your licensing information. We just want you to be fully equipped uh, to market your business um, and to have a good representation of, the, of your business. Um, help you with certifications. Robert will talk about things like bid document review, um, contract support through completion. And then, as I said before, the workshops, trainings, and academies. Next slide. Okay, that's my cue that uh, my portion of the uh, program presentation is complete. And uh, I'm gonna turn this off to one of our favorite people, our, one of our um, favorite program sponsor representatives from Metro, Mr. Keith Compton, who um, I, I must say is a pleasure to work with, is a true advocate, and I would even go so far as to say an activist in terms of the interest of small and diverse businesses doing business with Metro, um, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about uh, how Metro operates and how to take advantage of those opportunities. Mr. Compton. Thank you, Ingrid, and thank you for that introduction, because I do like activists better than advocate. <laughs> Good evening, afternoon, and thank you, all of you who are joining us today. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about how to do business with Metro because we have a ton of construction and we want you to be a part of it. Supervisor Janice Hahn is a director on our Metro board. And as Ingrid said, she is a staunch advocate for small business. So that's great uh, for us being that we work in the diversity and economic opportunity department at Metro. You may remember in 2016, Thank you to the voters who approved uh, Measure M and before that Measure R at, at Metro, which allowed us to embark on the most ambitious infrastructure expansion program in the country, which includes over $120 billion of infrastructure projects over the next 40 years. And what we wanna do is give you um, an opportunity to understand how to do business with us. We recognize that there are barriers that historically impede participation of small businesses, and we want to reduce those barriers. So joining me today, I'm going to introduce Olga Lopez, who is our senior representative in the Diversity and Economic Opportunity Department, and she will 
go ahead and introduce Jan Davis. And they are our uh, outreach gurus. I call them our, our gurus. So without further ado, we can go to the next uh, slide, please. What we are going to talk about today is being able to uh, provide a way to open doors for you. And we want our small businesses to be able to maximize participation. And on our end, we want to be able to maximize participation of small businesses on our contracts. Next slide. So who are we? Diversity and Economic Opportunity Department. We are your friends on the inside. We're advocates for small businesses and we serve as your system navigators. In other words, every agency has a way of doing business. You can't approach every agency the same way. They all do business differently. We are the ones you can pick up your phone and call and we answer the phones. We don't have a bunch of, you know, assistance to answer the phones. We pick up the phones and we walk you through what you need to, to get to. We are the administrators and we oversee our Metro Small Business Program initiatives and we're going to go over some of those. Um, we publicize our contracting opportunities. We also provide training and resources such as our CDABP program. We set our DBE, SPE and DBBE contract goals and our contract compliance department. And we also monitor compliance throughout that project. Uh, next slide. This is one of the most important things we're gonna talk about. Uh, certification, why get certified? Small business certifications are similar to professional certifications. They document a status that may help you compete in the marketplace. It increases your visibility to prime contractors. Prime contractors are required to meet SPE or DBE utilization goals once they are set on contracts. And as a certified firm, you're critical to the prime contractor's ability to successfully achieve those goals. Certification helps to level the playing field by providing a fair opportunity to compete for federally or non-federally funded transportation contracts for certified small business owners and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Now, one thing I wanna say before we go on to the next slide, the other reason you wanna get certified is because when we go through the process to put a goal on a contract, we are audited by the Federal Transit Administration. We have to show that there are enough certified businesses out there in order to put a goal on something. So if you're not certified, that reduces the chance of us to put a goal on a contract in the first place. The more small businesses we have that are certified, the more likely it is we can put a goal on a contract for that specific scope of work. So it's very, very important. I'm gonna turn it over to our outreach gurus. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Olga Maria Lopez, who will talk a little bit more about certification and then she's gonna introduce Jan. Thank you for participating and be sure to call us because we do pick up our phones. Olga? Yes, thank you, Keith. Thank you for handing over the presentation and for having us today, um, Meriwether and Williams. We are delighted. Um, I will be introducing my friend and colleague, as Keith mentioned, Jan Davis, who will be making the presentation on our small, uh, small business programs that we have available within our agency. Next slide, please. At Metro, there's two types of certifications that we accept. One is the, the DBE, the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. The DBE program requires that the applicant be socially and economically disadvantaged as it is outlined in CFR 49, part 26. Metro is a member of the California Unified Certification Program, the CUCP, and we accept DBE certified by other member agencies. 
by us being a member, it means that you can submit and you can begin your application directly with us if you are interested. The second type of certification which we accept is the Small Business Enterprise, the SBE. The SBE program is unique to Metro and it mirrors the DBE program, but it is race and gender neutral. The third type of certification that we accept, it's the Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise, the DVBE. This certification is provided by the Department of General Services, DGS. So we will acknowledge um, if you are DBBE certified. Next slide, please. The requirements. Remember I mentioned earlier that it mirrors. This is what we mean. Both these requirements are um, towards an, a DBE and an SBE certification. The business, one of the requirements is that the business must be independent, business organized for profit, the personal net worth less than 1.32 million, the annual gross receipts on a five-year average must be less than 26.29 million, the qualifying individuals in control of management and the daily business operations and 51% ownership by one or more economically disadvantaged individuals. Next slide. The additional requirements are that the DBE must also be socially disadvantaged. And what does that mean? Socially and economically disadvantaged individuals means any individual who's a citizen of the US or lawfully admitted permanent resident who is a member of at least one of the following groups, African Americans, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, subcontinent Americans, and women. Next slide. Where, you might be wondering, where do I begin uh, the certification process? Very easy. Metro is one is the, well, we were the only, we understand there's a few other agencies who are following lead and we are delighted, but we were the first um, California Unified Certification Program member agency that had implemented an online certification and management system. This application was designed to streamline the process for applicants and eliminate the need for hard copy submissions. I remember when I started at Metro within DEOD, our small businesses would submit um, boxes of the documents that were required. Well, you no longer have to do that. It is now all done online. The online certification features that include on B2G, it's um, a user-friendly platform, it's a tracking tool to check on the status of the applications. It provides free webinar system training to walk you through the form and the process. And you can go at your own time, folks. Um, you can begin uh, on one page. You, you begin the process. You take a day or two break in case you need to look for some required documentations. When you come back to pick up where you left off, it will, it, it will remain in that same area. So it's not gonna move until all of the required paperwork, it's uploaded so that you can be confident that by the time you hit that last send button, all of the required documents are in. It also provides a 24 our technical support. So it's very friendly and uh, we strongly encourage you to begin the online certification process. And next slide, please. You might be wondering then, where do I begin? If you go on metro.gov2g.com, metro.gov2g.com, this is where you can access the online application and we strongly encourage you that if there's any questions or additional information that you need regarding the certification, 
go ahead and send an email to our colleagues in the certification unit at metro.net. They will get back to you with an appropriate response. They also have a phone line that is dedicated for the cert certification. The number is included in, on this slide. And if there's any additional questions that you may have um, or you need to access the opportunities that we have available, we all have it included in the Metro vendor portal, which is metro.net forward slash connect, connect, that's us, Metro Connect. And with that, I'm going to hand over the mic and camera to Jan Davis. Jan? Hi, Olga. Hi. Yes. Hi, thank you. Great job, uh, you know, presenting our certification unit. And I just want to acknowledge what a privilege it is to be here with Meriwether and Williams and all of the wonderful people that's making this program happen. So I'm Jan Davis. I'm part of the DEOD outreach team. And uh, I am going to talk to you about Metro small business programs. So we have our small business prime set aside. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about our medium size business enterprise and some new things that are happening with our medium sized business. And we're gonna talk a little bit about our contracting, outreach and mentoring plan. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so our small business pro, uh, prime program has been cited as the US best practice by the Millikan Institute, and that's with uh, Bruce, Bruce Katz uh, and the Brookings Institute as well. So this is a groundbreaking program that allows SBEs to compete as primes. So um, SBEs can compete only against other SBEs on competitively negotiated RFPs from 3,000 to 5 million. This is both on federal and non-federal. Also, SBEs compete only against other SBEs on competitively low bids from three from uh, three thousand to three million. So, pretty much, what you can say is that the business model has been flipped. So, SBEs are now the primes; they're the big guys in the room, and they are able to contract services from large businesses, and um, and they become the subs. OK, so some of you may be familiar with that, but it is a wonderful thing that has happened in our agency. And so far, the impact since launch is one hundred and eighty eight million dollars awarded. We are going to be updating that slide because uh, to date that number has changed and it has gone up. So we're happy about that. Next slide, please. So our medium sized business enterprise, listen. This one is a little complicated because we have some new things that are happening on the medium size business, okay? So uh, in a nutshell, uh, this is a new set aside that bridges the gap between small businesses and large business concerns, okay? So what happens is that as a small business, you may graduate out of the uh, dollar requirement for small businesses. But with our medium-sized business, you are still able to compete in the market for Metro contracts. So let me tell you a little bit about what's happening with our medium-sized business and how you can participate in that. So before we go to the next slide, I wanna just say, I wanna point out um, as it says here, how it works. So what happens is Metro will invite uh, firms of any size to bid under MSZ. If we get two responsive MSZ bidders, then that triggers a set aside. Okay, so if it's less than two, then we just open the bid back up to everyone. Next slide. So here, this particular uh, infograph is showing you what is happening, uh, the program enhancements for our SB Prime and our medium sized program. So I don't wanna take a lot of time to go through this chart. I believe that this um, will be made available to you, this presentation, and you can get a chance to review it 
on your own time, but I just wanna talk a little bit about uh, what's happening here. So currently under MSZ, currently, now when I say currently, I mean as of uh, September of last year, because these uh, program enhancements are now uh, installed, okay? So they're up and running. So before, you know, uh, our current MSZ was from 12 million to 30 million. Well, now we have broken that down into um, two, MSZ one and two. So these are two different tiers um, of dollar thresholds, which you can bid as a medium-sized business. This is a little complex. So I really want you to uh, get a hold of this slide and just study it just a little bit more. We've also enhanced our Small Business Prime program to now where it is, it, uh, the dollar has increased, the threshold has increased from 3,000 to 4.99 million. Okay, so, and then on the um, MSZ2 tier, you see that begins at 15 million and it goes up to 30 million for all intents and purposes, but 29.999 million, okay? So we'll move on to the next slide. And uh, oh, before you go back, go back one more, I'm sorry. Let me just say that um, on the left, that you see here on the screen, those are for competitively negotiated RFPs. So those are the thresholds for competitively negotiated contracts. And then on the right side of the screen, that is for competitive low bid thresholds. Okay, so those numbers vary. All right, next slide, thank you. So this is another slide that talks a little bit more about the definition. So there are two ways to meet the MSZ1 criteria. So we'll go through it just a little bit. A firm that is not a subsidiary of another firm that has gross annual receipts averaged over three years or a number of employees that do not exceed one and a half times the small business side standard um, set forth in uh, CFR part 121. Okay, and this is part of the uh, North American industry classification. So, um, but any, uh, anyway, so for the uh, MSZ2, that definition, it says a firm that is not a subsidiary of another firm that has gross annual receipts of 26.3 million, 30 million, and does not exceed two times the small business site standards in dollars as set forth by thir in 13 CFR part 121. So, and this is averaged over three years for the number of employees. So now that business site standard, you know, it can be found um, on the uh, federal uh, government page if you have questions about what those standards are in the different next codes that you are a part of or that you have as your company. So next slide, please. So a little bit about our contracting outreach and mentoring plan. A lot of people have asked us about this and uh, we are looking to do uh, an outreach event where we are gonna just focus on um, the projects that have these uh, comp, um, uh, availability so that you can learn how more about how to be a part of our outreach and mentoring plan. So um, any firm or an RFP or an IFB uh, that is 25 million plus, they are required to submit a plan that tells us how they are going to measurably grow the capacity of a DBE, an SBE, or a DVBE firm, okay? So anytime we have a big prime that's gonna come in, they're gonna submit an RFP, an, I, an IFB, and the, if the contract is 25 million and above, then part of the requirement is that they have to submit this comp plan, okay? So they must show us uh, or, or what they must do when they submit their bid is they have to host outreach events for DBEs, SBEs, and DVBEs prior to submitting their plan. They have to provide innovative, 
measurable mentoring plans and evaluation criteria. So they not only have to tell us how they're gonna do it, but they're gonna show us how um, their success is being measured and how they are in, in a way to evaluate whether what they're doing is effective, okay? So um, they must also give us a detailed technical assistance strategy, okay? So they have to submit that in their plan as well. They have to identify who these mentors and protégés will be, okay? And then they have to specify their subcontracting approach. So they're gonna give it to Metro and we're gonna review it, not me personally, but the team that's designated to do that. They're going to review it and then they're going to approve it, okay? So it is about, you know, show us the money, right? <laughs> not necessarily the money, you know, uh, physically, but show us how you are going to achieve and how you are going to grow and how you are going to actually mentor this small business firm and grow their capacity. Okay, next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about our networking events and our workshops. So I'm gonna ask my colleague to come back on the screen, Olga Lopez. And we're gonna talk through this together. And Keith, if he would like to join us, he certainly can. Um, but um, our networking events, we like to call them our signature events. So many of you have heard us talking about how to do business with Metro. This happens the second Tuesday of every month, okay? And like uh, the slide says here, the name says it all. This workshop will provide attendees with the inside scoop on the critical steps needed to successfully qualify for, bid on, and win contracts on Metro projects. So not only does it do that, but we also will bring in um, other agencies, we call them our sister agencies, we'll bring in prime contractors, and we'll have them announce different opportunities that they have uh, with their firms, we would like to, it, it's kind of like a networking, um, if you will. And I know when we were uh, all live, well, um, we would, it, it would be more of a networking. But now in this uh, virtual world, we have learned how to navigate that really well and still be, uh, and still find a way to connect you with uh, our sister agencies and the prime contractors so that you can understand and learn what their opportunities are and also what the opportunities are for Metro and how you can connect in order to learn and gain more about our opportunities. So I'm gonna let Olga tell you about a few more events. And then, and then Keith is here. So he's gonna talk about the Transportation Business Advisory Council. And then we're gonna tell you about some events that are coming up um, that you would not wanna miss. So Olga, anything you wanna add to that? Sure, we're delighted. This How to Do Business with Metro, as Jen said, is every second Tuesday. Um, the next one is next week, May the 10th, and we're bringing a guest speaker from our department, which is from our agency, rather. He is a representative with um, OEI, the Office of Extraordinary. Uh, oh, my God, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, Keith. <laughs> Office <laughs> of Extraordinary Innovation. Yes. <laughs> Yes, but um, when you visit our vendor portal and if you see that there's no solicitations in the work in which you do, for example, the Office of Extraordinary Innovation will, they have a process where you can submit unsolicited proposals. So we strongly encourage you to come and learn more about how to do this and how to be a part of this opportunity. Um, we, uh, 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 Keith, would you like to <laughs> chime in on the tea back? Yeah, and I'd like to thank you and thank Jan for um, bringing your very jovial selves. You can tell everyone why they are our outreach people because they're just like sunshine all the time. 
um, <laughs> I'm the antithesis of that. But I think we're a little over time, so I'm just going to finish up. Uh, the Transportation Business Advisory Council meets the first Thursday of every month. Um, our next meeting is actually tomorrow, and it, it's a public meeting. Everyone is, is invited. All you have to do is log on, and if you go to metro.net forward slash connect, um, actually, if you can go to the next slide, if you go to metro.net forward slash connect, you'll find the Transportation Business Advisory Council, You'll find all of the information that we were talking about earlier, including the MSZ updates. If you go to the next slide, um, you'll, you'll see our vendor portal. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see the calendar of events. And um, thank you very much. I know we went a little over, sorry, but we look forward to having you work on our projects. Thank you, Jan, and thank you, Olga. Yes, our pleasure. Thank you, Keith. Ingrid, back to you. Okay, and I think I'm going to turn it over to our outreach team. Thank you, Ingrid. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Keith. And thank you, Jan. So now we are very excited to introduce a contractor enrolled in the Contractor Development and Bonding Program. Ernie Moreno is an owner of is a is the owner of Marn Construction and is here to share how the program has helped him in his journey to success. Please help me in welcoming Ernie Moreno. Hi, can everyone hear me all right? Yes. Um, well, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Ernie Moreno. I'm the president of Marn Construction. Uh, We've been around since 1993, but I took over about three years ago. Uh, we do concrete, anywhere from curbs, gutters, sidewalks, you know, some decorative concrete, just a little bit about everything having to do with concrete. Uh, when I took over, I didn't have the backing, I guess, you will, if you will, of, um, being a business owner for a long period of time. So when it came time to getting bondy, bonding for a job that was upcoming, we didn't have that trust and that rapport with the banks and our bonding agents. Uh, our bonding agent at the time referred us to Rosa and um, she was able to tell me about the program and uh, she got us the bonding that we needed for the LAX project that we got, which I believe we are currently the highest bond that you guys have awarded. Uh, we were awarded $9.7 million in bonding. Uh, without that, we never would have had the opportunity to get that job at LAX. And now it's keeping my guys busy. Uh, we have work for, I think, almost two years now. So everyone's pretty happy. And uh, it gave me and my company a great opportunity to be able to progress and move forward. So it's has been very beneficial. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you guys want me to say or <laughs> you guys have any questions. Ernie, that's perfect. Thank you. This is Ingrid Merriweather. We're sorry. We know this isn't your normal course of business that you get in front of people and do presentations, but it is really helpful for folks to hear from their peers and colleagues how, you know, this is real. Uh, and it makes a difference. And you're correct. Uh, you represent the largest single transaction in the program in 17 years um, for Los Angeles. And congratulations. I hope things are going well on the project. And when you finish that one up, or maybe not even waiting until you finish that up, let us know what you want to go after there next, because we'll be there to help you with that one too. Well, we already have another one in our sites. So okay. hope. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we'll do uh, you guys will be able to help again. Um, of course, that's what we're here for. We want to see you grow and build capacity and demonstrate to everybody else what's possible. I know, and I appreciate it. All my guys appreciate it. Everybody that works here appreciates it. And, you know, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. We enjoy working with you. Good luck to you, Ernie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ingrid, can I ask Ernie a question? Of course. Is the next big project you're going after a metro project? <laughs> I we're looking at the Clippers 
stadium. Oh, oh see, I want the biggest project to be a Metro project. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep We're, trying. We have been looking into the Metro. Um, I started looking into the application process actually a few weeks ago. Um, I did want some clarification if all my, because I'm DDBE, I'm also a minority. I was wondering if all those certificates will just transfer over or do I still have to go through the full application process? That's a very good question. For the DVBE, we don't act, we don't do the actual uh, certification. We accept everything from DGS. Okay. So if you're DGS certified for DVBE, we accept that automatically. Now your other one, your other certification, if it's a, a DBE, if it's a CUCP, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, perfect. Well, then I will uh, continue to look into that program and apply. All right, we want the biggest one. <laughs> I will try it. All right, good luck, you guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Ernie. Thank you, Ernie, and thank you, Ingrid. You're now welcome. we have a full question for the audience. How did you hear about this program? I'll give the audience 30 seconds to respond. Thank you all who participated. And now helping us navigate LA County contract opportunities is Guyan Zakarian. Guyan Zakarian, Chief of Administrative Operations at Public Works, go, uh, joined the County of Los Angeles Department of Public Works in 1990. Since then, she has held several key positions in the field of finance, personnel, and now contracting. Guyan currently oversees public works service contracts, contract monitoring compliance of the living wage program for Proposition A and cafeteria services contracts. She is a strong supporter of providing business opportunities to the local community and awarding contracts to local small businesses, nonprofit firms and disabled veteran business enterprises, which help strengthen the local economy and create jobs in the community through contract partnerships in areas served by the county. Please help me in welcoming Guyan Zakarian. Guyan? Yes. Um, can you guys see me? Yes. Okay. May I start? Um, if you could stop sharing your screen so I may share mine. Yes. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Can everybody see? Now we see you're good. Okay, can you guys see my my face? <laughs> yeah, we can see it all, Guyan. Thank you. Okay, let's start. Good afternoon. My name is Guyan Zakarian, Chief Administrative Operation Public Works, and thank you so much for the introduction earlier. It's an honor to be here today. Los Angeles County Public Works is one of the largest public works agencies in the nation with a workforce of 4,000 employees and an annual budget of 3.7 billion. In fiscal year 2021, Public Works awarded over 1 billion worth of contracts that helped create over 12,000 jobs. We've been working with our county departments and partners to help promote equity in county contracting. The contractor development and bonding assistance program is one of the great efforts in removing the barriers in county contracting so small businesses like yours can successfully compete for construction projects. 
At this point, I would like to introduce Amy Lee and Robert Murphy from my team who will present on how to begin the process for doing business with Public Works. Robert and Amy oversee the business outreach program in business relation and contracting division, which is my division, and they provide business friendly contracting opportunity as well as a broad range of other program designed to promote local economic growth and prosperity. We look forward to partnering with all of you. Thank you so much for having us. I'm going to have Robert start her PowerPoint. Thank you, Guyana. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here with you on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon in Southern California. I'm excited to be part of this event. Uh, it, we're dedicated to supporting the growth and development of the regional economy. And it's always a pleasure to uh, reach out to the different businesses and contractors that we may potentially be doing business with on the projects in Supervisorial District 4. Um, so I'm going to just quickly talk a little bit about public works in general. Um, as Keith mentioned, each agency is a little bit different uh, the way they conduct business. So I'm gonna quickly go over what we do, who we are, and then we're gonna walk you through how we do business. Um, many people are unaware of all the things that we do as an agency. We have uh, six what we call core service areas, and uh, those are transportation, water resources, um, environmental services, construction management, development services, and emergency management. So we're working on roads, we're working on traffic signal, signals, bridges, vertical construction, horizontal construction, uh, sewers, uh, flood channels, all basically everything that you can think of as being a crucial activity for keeping the quality of life high, we're involved with it. So typically if we're doing our job right, then you won't notice because you're, you're comfortable. Um, so let me just uh, quickly talk about uh, wh what we're doing as an agency and uh, as a, the county, I should say, and our commitment to making the, all of these contracting dollars uh, support the growth and development of the local economy through the development of the businesses, uh, which is, a, is directly related to what, what we're doing here, uh, the contractor development and the bonding assistance program. And uh, we look at this as a regional collaborative with our partners, Metro and LA City and Meriwether and Williams. And uh, we, as the county, are committed to using those contracting dollars to uh, not just help businesses be successful, but we want them to thrive. And so we want to help them from the startup point into the being a small business, to being a medium-sized business, to being a large business, the kind of business that is going to last a long time, that will be institutional and, and can last for generations. And so that's the what Amy and I will be talking about today. Uh, we are part of a small outreach unit. And that's what one of the things that we do as, as well as running economic development programs. So uh, as Keith has his own unit at Metro, we are also, uh, we are the unit at Public Works that's devoted to helping those businesses. And we are also answering the telephone. So if you call somebody uh, in our unit, we'll be answering the phone and helping you and directing you to help you succeed and navigate the contracting process. Um, so let's see, you saw some of the, some of the stats up there. Um, just quickly, uh, $3.5 million, uh, $3.5 million private sector jobs, approximately half of those are small businesses. So, uh, you know, really the small businesses are still huge in Los Angeles County and they're carrying a lot of the weight of making sure the economy is healthy. And so all of the services that the county uses and all the products that the county uses, uh, we need contracting services and products to fill the gaps that we have and to support all the services provided by the county. And so, and that's the same thing for public works as an agency, uh, we need your help. We need the private industry's help, private sector's help to deliver the services that we provide to the public. So those six core service areas that I talked about, 
and as well as support services. Uh, there, there's so many there's so many places for co contracting opportunities within public works, and um, I know that we're going to be mostly focused on construction here, but I am going to talk a little bit about procurement and supplies because you need supplies to to build things. And so uh, let's talk about the first step for all county vendors. You have to register to be a vendor. And you're going to do that by going to our sister department, internal services department. And they're going to on there, you'll find a very simple process of registering as a county vendor. That's the first step for doing business with any county department. You have to first become a county vendor. Uh, the instructions are, pretty, are simple and they're clear, but if you do have any issues and there's a what we call contractor vendor relations number and you can always call that and get additional help or reach out to us and we can direct you to the correct place and that's the doing business.lacounty.gov and we also have preference what we call preference programs that are for certain types of businesses and will sometimes equalize the playing field in regards to solicitations um, so we're going to, those are our certification programs. And again, just like Metro, you have to be a certain type of business. Our certifications are a little bit different, but it's the same basic idea. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what those are, but I'm just going to quickly touch on them. And I, I urge you to go to this website and to see, do some research, look at the different programs and then see which one your business would qualify for. Uh, we have local and small business enterprises and we have disabled veteran business enterprises and social enterprises. And we have preference programs that are built around those three. Um, in addition to that, uh, we also have a community business enterprises and we're starting to do outreach to community business organizations. So we've made a commitment to all of these different areas and hopefully there's some place where your business can slide in there and help. Um, and you may, some people will think, well, I, you know, I don't, I'm not ready to be a prime contractor. I want to be a subcontractor. And there's no, so there's no reason for me to get certified. Well, I want to uh, just touch on that very quickly. That's uh, be aware that the, the business that we do with the prime contractors, uh, they're very aware that it's important to Los Angeles County to do business with small businesses and those other businesses that I, that I mentioned in the preference programs. And so when they're giving, when they're, when they're bidding or putting a proposal for on a solicitation on one of the construction projects, they uh, will list the subcontractors that they have signed up. And we are looking for them to be, have a diverse set of contractors, including local small business enterprises. Um, the social enterprises, disabled veteran business enterprises, and the community business enterprises, and the community business organizations. And we will hold them to that, and we there's, there's a best effort for them to make that attempt, and we hold them to that. And so if you're certified, then you could potentially get a leg up as a subcontractor also. That's to at least uh, give you a little bit of a, a marketing boost when you're preparing your documents for uh, to market or sell yourself to the prime contractors. And so, um, so visit that website. It's uh, it's with the Workforce Development and Aging and Community Services website and do your research on the certification programs. Uh, see where you fit in there. And so uh, the real question is, so what, uh, once you do that, you get registered as a vendor for the LA County, and then you, you see what certifications you qualify for and go through the certification process. Once you do all that, then you're going to want to come to our website, which is uh, do business with public works. And they're dropped, they just dropped it. They're going to drop it in the chat there for you. There you go. So it, there you go. Do business with publicworks.com. It's not on the PowerPoint, but it's in the it's dropped they it dropped in the chat there. Uh, so on our website, you're going to see all the opportunities that are open or upcoming. Um, we have uh, it's the, it'll have all of the contracting opportunities. So you'll see everything that we do. Like I mentioned before, we have construction projects um, 
we have the horizontal infrastructure, and then uh, we have what, called, what we call professional services. And those will cover a wide range of different types of areas. And then of course, purchasing and procurement, which is equally diverse. And so uh, I'm just gonna quack, uh, talk very quickly about the purchasing and I'm gonna hand it off to Amy and she's gonna kind of guide you through using the website. And um, with, the, with the procurement and supplies, uh, I know that we're, most of the people on this call are probably construction uh, contractors, but of course, if you're a supplier, that's part of the construction industry. It's a huge part of it. And we do need suppliers to go through the procurement process to give us the materials we need to do the work. And so you can see some of the materials and services that we do there on the left. And uh, again, that's just a tiny piece of what we do. There's much more than that. And then on the right side, you can see we have everything from, um, you know, this, the, from tiny supplies to uh, huge industrial supplies on a billion dollar project. Uh, so if you're, in, if you're in any type of uh, procurement or, uh, or supply chain uh, business, that industry, then you're definitely gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna check in with our internal services department and public works procurement, and you're gonna wanna see what it takes to become uh, a, a supplier for LA County. And you can do that either through a master agreement or sometimes we'll have solicitations for it, but the process will always be a little bit different depending on what type of supplies you get into. So you'll have to do a little bit of research. You can reach out to us, you can reach out to the internal services department, and we can guide you through what type of, uh, which, which avenue you should take as a supplier. Okay, so I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Amy Lee. She's, uh, she's, uh, she runs the programs along with me, and she's in the same unit. And she's going to tell you how to use the, how to use the website for public works. Thanks, Robert. Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday and happy first day of setting yourself up for success with public works contracting. So in order to even land a contract, you're going to need to know where to look, and that's do business with publicworks.com. You want to do business with publicworks.com? Um, you go to do business with publicworks.com. You can search the opportunities by filtering for your business wherever that um, fits in, whether it be infrastructure or building or professional. We even have sundry for things like graffiti removal. Um, so anything that you can think of, um, everything that Robert had mentioned and core services, it can touch a wide range. And there's definitely a place for you to fit in um, with your business. You can even search opportunities by their status. So from closed to awarded, or probably what you're most interested in is open and um, upcoming. We currently have um, a bunch of opportunities open at the moment, and we have 70 upcoming opportunities listed on the page, uh, 70 of which you are probably going to want to start preparing for, either getting your bid or proposals together, or to start getting in touch and partnering with those businesses that are going to help you be more competitive. If you're looking at open opportunities, there's a few key things we want, really want to know. Proposal due date and time, you don't want to miss that. Um, the contact person or the contract administrator, that's the person that you're going to contact in regards to you know, making sure that your, your bid is um, submitted properly. The RFP documents, make sure you read them carefully so that you're submitting your proposal according to what's being requested, especially in that document. That's our guiding light. Um, and how to proceed with submitting your bid. When you're competing with a contract, you can create a, an account and register for that specific project. Um, that way you can get automatic emails when anything's released, any addendums. It also publishes your contact information so other contractors can reach out and partner with you. So whether you're a prime or a sub, it's good to register and be a plan holder. Whether you're a sub looking to partner with other primes, this is a good place to put your company name so primes can reach out to partner with you. Even if you're listed as a prime and you don't get awarded that contract, there may still be opportunities for you to partner with a winning prime um, for opportunities in the future. So there's nothing to lose when it comes to signing up as a plan holder. So set yourself up for success. 
There are so many resources and opportunities available. Make it so that you've done everything you could in preparation for when that perfect opportunity uh, arrives. Make sure you're registered first. Um, uh, Robert has talked on you know, how, that you need to register before you can even do business with the county department and make sure you get certified through weed acts. Take advantage of those benefits um, such as bid preference and things like that. Um, you don't wanna miss out on that. Sign up as a plan holder. Um, we just talked about that and register for any open opportunities so they can stay in the know and keep networking with other prime contractors. Um, Meriwether has also already talked on the contractor development and bonding assistance program. So you now know of some of the benefits of the program and what kind of bonding and technical assistance they can offer to small contractors. Um, make sure that you're on their contractor weekly email blast so you can be notified of that as well. Um, and we'll kind of talk about um, our own as well in, coming in the slide. So it's very crucial that you fill out your bid documents correctly. You have the resources to do so. As I mentioned, the contract administrator is going to be a resource for you so that they can answer any questions. Don't be afraid to ask any questions and make sure you're signed up to receive those notifications because any questions that arrive at these pre-bid meetings can get posted so everyone has access to that information. Information will always be your greatest resource. Um, so on this slide, we have just a few examples of the upcoming opportunities in Supervisorial District 4. Um, hopefully after this presentation, you won't need to, need to attend an event like this in order to know of what's upcoming because you will already know do business with publicworks.com. You can filter to upcoming projects and it has a whole list. Some of these are already on there. Um, so you can, you know, kind of be prepped and start getting ready for when those do come out. And this is... The next one, which is my favorite tip of the day, um, subscribe to our Do Business with Public Works the, uh, newsletter to get our weekly notifications on new opportunities um, for great resources for businesses like yours. Our team puts a lot of pride in these email blasts and you'll be the first to know um, what new opportunities are available that week or any events coming up such as this one. If you're not on the list and you missed today's newsletter that went out, we have an upcoming in-person event at the Public Works headquarters in Alhambra on Tuesday, May 17th. We will have other county partners, WEDAX, ISD, um, as well as Meriwether and Williams who will also be providing resources. Um, and we also have public works project managers and our procurement there to also um, present. So of course, you know, they are available to connect with you on resources and how to complete, how to compete on public works projects. So if you're interested in the world of public works contracting, please click the Eventbrite link. Um, Evelyn will drop that in there and you can register this for free and hope to see you there. So I think at this time we'll open it up or if you have any questions, you can contact myself or Robert Murphy. Um, we are over these economic development programs over at Public Works and we are happy to be a resource to you and be available to you to help you compete on Public Works contracting. Okay. Uh, Robert, do you have any final notes? Uh, nothing for me, Amy. Great job. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Guyanne. And now we have uh, Robert Lowry. He's presenting on technical assistance for the contractor development and bonding program. He's field support project manager for Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services. Robert. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm a briefly go through some of the uh, support that you receive uh, when you're enrolled in the program and you are chasing some of these bids at Metro, the county or wherever. Uh, we take a lot of pride into this. Uh, the, the thing is with the public works, the sponsors, they are also looking for the lowest bidder and the most responsive. So the key word is re most responsive. So we spend some time going through the documentations that's in the bid documents to understand fully what is expected. And we also attend the pre-bid so as we can understand exactly the scope of work, uh, the dollar amount, 
edit all the kind of things. And then we do a contract review where we look at the plans and specs. And with that, you know, we go through and identify any risks that I might see or anything that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, the disclaimer here is when we're doing this bid document review, we cannot tell you about your numbers. We can only look at the documentations, what you're filling out. Uh, that is the key thing here. Uh, and because we do not want to take liability if we give you a number. Now, what I can say with some of the general requirements, I might ask a question, hey, did you include this in your general requirements, general uh, conditions, those kind of things, so that you can go back and look at it. But I cannot tell you exactly what's wrong with these numbers. Uh, so once you have gone through the bid documents we've reviewed with you, you can then go back and make the changes. We will also can set up another appointment to do a follow-up uh, bid document review with you to make sure that everything is filled out, nothing is blank. And if anything is blank, you put NA in there. So that tells Metro and the county that you have acknowledged that that does not apply to you. Uh, after the bid has been submitted, we can also do a debrief with you to give you some pointers. So when you next go around, you have a better chance and getting bids with it. So there's a lot of things we do with the bid document review. Um, next slide, please. So once you are have been awarded a project, this is where I really my specialty comes in is helping with the completion, the field support. Uh, we'll have a kickoff meeting with you, our team, uh, and if it's the sponsor or the prime, we get everybody together in this meeting and go through the requirements, expectations. Uh, have a job checklist that I will go through to make sure that you're not missing anything as you're setting up this job. There's a lot of times where the back of the office is getting left out, safety, so we want to make sure that everything is covered. Uh, we do monthly check-ins. We have a contract and a principal staff reports where it shows me the progress of change orders, uh, your billing, uh, your estimated completion dates, there's other fields on there. If something's not being, you're not progressing satisfactory, that's on there. I take these two different documents, reports, and compare. So if I see a discrepancy, then I get on the phone with you or the prime, and we have a meeting to determine what's the discrepancy here. Uh, that is the key thing to make sure that you're completing these projects successfully. Uh, we don't want any hiccups, any claims. Also, we'll spend time with you on your billing to go through to make sure it's set up um, so that way it doesn't get kicked back to you. Construction schedule, look at three week look ahead, look at your portion to see if you are on the critical path or not, because that also then goes into your performance and liquidating damages. We wanna make sure that none of that happens with you. We try our best to mitigate a lot of this. we we'll also will do site visits and with the report that now that the pandemic is ending, I can now start to go back out into the field to do site visits at the construction sites, to work with your field crew, uh, give recommendations on safety, do safety audits, a lot of that. Then the other thing we can do is change orders. Change orders is critical because you get these change orders, you wanna submit them in a timely fashion to the owners or to the prime, uh, so that way you can put it on your billing. Because a lot of times these change orders get you know, drug out and you can't bill for the work that you've done. So we do these log reviews to help you audit, uh, reconcile monthly. And then at the end of the job, there's also requirements of as bills warranty. So we work with you on that. So, and then if there's also the collateral bonding, we help with that to make sure everything is zeroed out so you can get your bond release and the collateral. So there's just some of the things that we do. You know, we also have open hours, office hours. So if you have questions, you can reach out to me uh, and I can help you with that. So I believe that's it. So if you have any other questions, you can also reach out uh, with our contact information and we can take there, you know, take it from there. So thank you guys for the opportunity to let me speak on the technical support part, technical assistance. Thank you, Robert. And thank you for the overview on the technical assistance portion of the uh, program. We had a, a few poll questions for the audience, but since we're a little short on time, we're going to skip over this and actually turn it back to Robert who has some closing remarks. 
Uh, okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of your schedule to attend this and also to our sponsors at Metro and the county. Uh, they have been great advocates uh, with the program and I love working with them. And I'm excited to start building a relationship with the county. Um, so it's been great. And then also with our um, speaker uh, testimony, uh, I have used Mar Construction in the past. So it's great building this relationship. So it has been a great pleasure to have everyone on here. And that if you have gotten any other questions, feel free to, to reach out to us on that. And I believe if there's any other questions, uh, we have our account managers that is monitoring the Q&A session. So with that, I want to thank everybody, and I'm going to turn it back over to Mildred. Thank you all, and um, thank you for joining us. I'll, I'll leave the, uh, the webinar open in case you have any last questions you'd like to ask the account managers or anyone on the panel, and we will close the webinar in a few minutes. Thank you again for joining. <laughs>